Was your guidance raised just the euphoria that we've seen in AI? Um, uh, hi, Ed. Hi, Caroline. Uh, we, we, with all the planning activity that's going on after the end of the year, uh, for fiscal year 24 and 25, for new products, new customers, new growth, and now this is going on all over the world, uh, we had a lot of good news to report, and we wanted to make sure that there wasn't an inadvertent uh, selective disclosure of this information. So we issued this release just to make sure that the information was provided to the market in a manner that's uh, compliant with all uh, SEC regulations. Thomas, it's fascinating. C3 generative AI for enterprise search. I think it was March that you unveiled this. You've said at the moment that the addressable market for enterprise AI is extraordinarily large, but everyone's fighting for it. We just had, of course, Palantir saying they want to take the whole market for generative AI, and they're particularly active in some of the defense areas that you are. Can there be multiple players? How are you feeling about competition? I think if we look at this, so Caroline, as you know, for some years now, for over a decade, we've been talking about this emerging market for applying uh, artificial intelligence to enterprises for, uh, to improve their business operations. Now, I think uh, as we power into 2023, the whole world has come around to seeing that this is a huge addressable market and there's no corporation that want, doesn't want to take advantage of it. Uh, this looks like a, you know, larger than a half a billion, half a trillion dollar addressable software market uh, growing very rapidly. And uh, I think there's going to be an opportunity for many companies to be quite successful in this space after it's over. This is this is a big one. And how are they using your particular offering? How are what you are building for these companies? We just saw a load of the names proving different. Well, we, we use AI to basically make uh, all these enterprise applications that have been inst installed in the last three decades, uh, ERP, CRM, manufacturing, supply chain, to make them predictive so that we can predict uh, how many parts we need in each component of our supply chain so we deliver products on time and in, in full. For the United States Air Force, we use it to predict uh, device failure or system failure in weapon systems like aircraft so that they have increased availability fraud detection, customer churn. So these are the uh, most common applications of enterprise AI to business processes. And I think that uh, there is no CEO in the world uh, that is not now trying to figure out how this is not kind of number one on his or her list to try to figure out how to use these technologies to advance their market position. Tom, on April 4th, Kerisdale Capital, a known short seller, allege serious accounting and disclosure issues with C3 AI. What is your latest response to that short seller report? Well, you can see on our IR website that our uh, audit committee uh, conducted an independent investigation with independent outside counsel and independent accounting firm and determined that all of those allegations were a complete bunk. Uh, and so that we published that this morning. Uh, it's been well reported that Karis Dale is under investigation by the Department of Justice uh, for doing this sort of thing to manipulate stock prices to their uh, economic advantage. If this is true, it's highly unlawful. Uh, uh, we expect to have the opportunity to, to cooperate with the Department of Justice on this activity, and uh, hopefully the Department of Justice will do their job. And, uh, and if they find that there is wrongdoing, hopefully these people will be um, uh, prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Okay, Tom, thank you for the update on, on that. I went to our audience and I said, Tom Siebel's coming on the show, what do you want to know? One question that caught my eye, are there any government or public sector contracts that you have turned down for ethics reasons when it relates to AI? Yes, uh, there there is a government, and I won't say which one. Okay, that is asked. Oh come on, you've got to say which one now, Tom. You which, which government that has asked us to use AI to uh, a Western government uh, that it, because okay. that's all we do business with that has asked us to use AI to identify extremists in the population. We think that uh, we don't want to touch that. On a more uh, a less controversial note, okay, we've been asked. We were asked some years ago to build an HR, um, uh, AI-enabled HR system for the Department of the Army. Okay, this would use a AI to determine who to promote, who to assign. Now, we neglect, we, we elected not to do that because yeah. what we're doing is propagating 
cultural bias. No matter what the question is, the answer will be white male went to West Point. And in, you know, 2020, the 21st century, that answer is simply not going to fly. And uh, so there are other companies in our business who would uh, get a snap at that opportunity in a second, but, but we won't do those things. Basically, you're saying you're self-regulating. Tom, and I'm, yes. I'm interested in what you make of the guardrails, whether they're being put in place enough amid private markets. We just had the Credo AI CEO on recently, Navina, who's working along with Booz Allen. I know you do a lot of work with Booz Allen, thinking about how we can have these guardrails put in place by the companies themselves. Ultimately, do you think government needs to be ahead of the curve here? You have a lot of ex-government officials on your board, for example. Caroline, I think you're raising a very important issue. I mean, the, this matter of the ethical application of AI is hugely important. I mean, these technologies are extraordinarily powerful. And uh, pretty soon it will be almost virtually impossible for a mortal to determine the difference between news and fake news. These questions call into the question uh, our ability to conduct free and open Democrats, democratic societies. So this is very troubling stuff. I, I don't believe that in the long run that self-regulation is going to work. Uh, we've seen too many private enterprises and, by the way, too many public sector organizations that do not act beneficially. But, um, you know, it is an important issue and it does need to be discussed or this will go to some um, horrible, horrible places. Tom, I, I want to come to you and ask about your costs. There's a lot of emphasis on particularly chip design, you know, finding the most efficient path forward to power, cloud, the energy costs behind building large language models, training foundational models. How are you kind of making sure that in all the work you're doing, you, you said you're bringing new products in, that you're still not letting kind of costs unravel and get out of control? Well, our costs, so our, our cost in operating these, uh, these large language models and these enterprise AI applications and our customers' costs are primarily in, uh, from these vendors that provide the cloud infrastructure from Google Cloud, from AWS, from uh, Microsoft, Azure, what have you. Now, I think that you know, these guys who operate these companies and, the, and those companies that are behind them, like NVIDIA, these are very smart people, and they, they are, I think, making amazing kind of breakthroughs in chip technology and energy efficiency technology. And I'm, I'm co confident they will be able to provide these uh, massive scale uh, computational and storage infrastructures uh, available to governments and private enterprises at, uh, at more than acceptable cost.